Welcome to this CPD video clip about Padlet, a versatile blank wall that I hope you will see has many potential uses. So without any delay, let's take a look. First step, uh, go to the Padlet website at http colon forward slash forward slash padlet.com the address is at the bottom of the uh, screen at the moment and click on as shown on the image uh, the build a wall button your board will open and look like this on the right hand side of the screen there is additional information First of all, you are told that your wall is ready and that you can start posting. As you can see, you've got two choices. You can double click on the background or you can drag a file onto the background. I personally think that double clicking on the background is the safest of the two bets. If you double click as I have, the posting box opens. and the side menu collapses back down to just a single bar. Back to the posting box where you are invited to add your name and title for the post. Uh, it is important that you put your name uh, and a title. Uh, the name in particular will help whoever is um, owner of the wall to identify the learner who is posting to their wall and or colleague if it's going to be used for collaborative work. Having added your name and title, users can add text by clicking and typing where it actually says write something. Uh, here's an example uh, produced specifically for this clip. And for those of you who are familiar with keyboard shortcuts, most of them will work as well. Control B for bold, Control I for italic, and so on. Last but not least on the um, post box is three ways highlighted here that additional content can be added to the post being made. Clicking the link icon, for example, allows users to add a URL. In other words, a link to something online or in your Dropbox or other cloud container. It doesn't matter if it's an image, a video, a map, a slideshow, a document, a website, or anything else. I've actually, for this video clip, pasted the URL to my September 2013 podcast. The end result is a post that looks like this. It's not over impressive uh, in this example, but... If visitors to the Padlet move their mouse over the post, as I've shown here, they can click to view it. In this case, it'll be the web page with my podcasts. Note, this is still in Padlet. You haven't gone to the website. Um, in this case, it's a live web page where the learners can actually listen to the podcast tracks. Uh, and if practitioners are using Padlet in Moodle or another VLE, it means that learners will actually stay on the platform and not get distracted by going elsewhere. Note the post title and text are also available. And it's handy if the URL that you've posted is to a video clip and the text had questions that the learners need to answer or think about while the clip is playing. In the top corner of the screen is the usual kiss it goodbye uh, icon that when clicked closes the pop-up window and returns the user to the Padlet wall. 
Note the top corner will normally look more like this, where the 6 slash 6 shows that the user, uh, that they are actually looking at the 6th post out of 6. Clicking on the icon uh, labelled 1 here will take the user to the previous post, in other words, the 5th out of 6, and so on. Clicking on the icon labelled 2 will take the user to the first post, and then that will look like this. Now, clicking on the icon labelled 1 will take the learner to the last post, and clicking on the on icon label 2 will take the user to the second post out of 6. Yeah, on any post other than the first or the last, uh, the top right hand corner will actually look like this. In other words, you can move to the fourth or you can move back to the second post. The uh, second step, I suppose, now is to actually look at adjusting the settings for your wall. Most practitioners will want to make some adjustments to the wall to make it more appropriate for use in a learning environment. You just move the mouse over the modify this wall icon. Um, and just left click. The first adjustment I'm going to do is to add a title and description for the wall being created. Note the icon that I've uh, clicked on, the profile, the text that I've added for the title and the description that I've put in. My page now looks like this and note the post on the wall that we've mentioned right from the word go. Users can also add a small image to the wall by selecting one of the images that's provided or by uploading one of their own. This is the image that I've used for this particular clip. The header on the wall will now look like this. For many, corporate badging is important. I can understand this, but I feel that sometimes things need to stand out from the crowd. The next adjustment that can be made is the background, or as some call it, the wallpaper for the wall. Again, you can see users can upload their own wallpaper or choose from those that are provided. For this clip, I've chosen a wall for my wall seemed appropriate. Next, I feel that changing the address for the wall is important. You can't expect learners to copy the provided address from Padlet without some errors, so choosing an address that makes life easier all round makes sense. The green tick shown here will indicate that the address chosen is actually available. We can't have the same address being used more than once. So this is this wall now has the address http colon forward slash forward slash padlet dot com slash wall slash rscnw feedback. I'll actually come back to that later. Step four is privacy settings. Um, by default, Padlet selects the hidden link which as you can see the link is public but hidden from Google and the public areas of Padlet. For some learners practitioners may want to password protect the wall to ensure that only those with the password can access it. And lastly I know that some practitioners are worried about what's going to be posted so you actually have the option to moderate posts before they show on the wall. All you do is just check the box as I've indicated here. Each of you will have your own preferences to meet your own needs. Um, but once you've selected what is appropriate for you, remember to click Submit. The next step is layout. By default, posts can be clicked and dragged into any position. It's called freeform. The other option is called stream. Um, and this places posts one below the other. 
this is a matter for individuals again to decide but i prefer stream and as an owner of the wall i can change the order that the posts will appear i should point out that i can also edit posts i usually provide feedback on the posts themselves and or a thank you to have greater control of the wall that you have created it's essential to take ownership that will allow you to get notifications when the posts are actually made. Be warned, as you can see here, you need to log in or sign up to have control of the wall for longer than 24 hours. I mean, so it is useful on occasions to be able to set up a wall there and then within a workshop, within a meeting, to get people to post, perhaps anonymously, uh, and then uh, export it and we'll look at that a bit later as a, a PDF or whatever and then in 24 hours it's gone or you can choose to just click on the delete button and the wall is gone so that gives you a sort of instant wall to work with step seven uh, notifications when you've signed up instead of when you click on notifications saying you need to sign up or log in you'll see now that you'll be able to set up notifications which basically sends you an email once a day of what people have put posted step eight as you can see from the image there are many ways that padlet wall can be shared via social media sites rss feeds documents emails the list goes on it can also be embedded within web presences. In other words, your website, VLEs, blogs, etc. And the wall can still be used as I described. Last but not least, it can be shared via QR codes. Step nine, editing and deleting posts. In the bottom corner of posts, owners, those who have written the posts uh, and owners of the wall can delete the post as shown here and or edit it. Whichever one, you just take the post, hover over the appropriate icon and just left click. Finally, please use the URL or QR code shown here to add to the wall that I've just produced. Thank you. I look forward to your posts. That's all from me, John Dio. Bye for now.